Hello guys, welcome to the Cricket Digest channel. In this video, let's take a look at one of the safety aspects of cricket. When it comes to safety, most of the batsmen think of pads and gloves and they tend to give very less importance to helmet. For a very long time in cricket history, helmet was never a part of batsman safety equipment. Well, now we all know how crucial the helmet is. Recently, Sri Lankan batsman Dimut Karunaratne was hit on his helmet and had to be taken to the hospital immediately as he fell uncontrollably after he was hit. Luckily, he suffered no injury and he was clear to play after all the medical checkup. Without the helmet, he would have suffered a serious injury. Now, let's take a look at the history pages and see how the helmet was introduced to cricket. The ball used in cricket weighs between 155.9 gram to 163 gram and is covered with the rigid leather. Because of this heavy nature of cricket ball, bouncers bowled at around 140 km per hour can be a serious threat to the batsman's safety. George Summers of Nottinghamshire died in 1970 after being hit by a cricket ball while batting. In 1958-59 season, Abdul Aziz of Pakistan was killed in a similar fashion. In 1962, India's Nari contractor was hit on the back of his skull. His life was saved after multiple surgeries. Though he recovered from the injury, he could not play the game anymore. In spite of so many incidents, nobody used the helmet until 1977. An English player named Dennis Amis was the first batsman to wear the helmet consistently in World Series cricket, which was held in 1977. He wore a customized fiberglass motorcycle helmet. The crowd and other players mocked him for using it. He proved his point when the helmet saved him from getting hit. This incident led to a major change in the mindset of the players. In 1978, Australian cricketer Grahan Yalop wore the helmet for the first time in Test cricket. The initial few helmet designs were very heavy, produced a lot of heat because of the material used and also ventilation was an issue. Few designs obstructed the view as well. Over the years, helmet design got better and by 1990s, many batsmen started using it. In 1998, Indian cricketer Raman Lamba was hit on his head while fielding at short leg position which led to his death. After this incident, most of the close fielders too started using the helmet. In spite of so many horrific incidents, neither MCC nor ICC had mandated the use of helmets. In the older version of cricket law, if a fielder was wearing the helmet and if the ball touched the helmet while catching it, the catch was considered invalid. In 2014, after the tragic incident of Australian cricketer Phil Hughes, who died after being hit on the back of his neck, ICC and other national cricket boards started considering the helmet issue seriously. Phil Hughes suffered an injury and lost his life though he was wearing the helmet. This made the ICC to reconsider the design of the helmet and the loss around it. Following this incident, England Cricket Board and Cricket Australia have made it a compulsion to wear the helmet in their domestic matches. Which means a batsman has to wear the helmet all the time while he is batting. England Cricket Board has gone one step ahead and made it compulsory for all the fielders to wear the helmet who are standing closer than 8 yards from the batsman. In 2017, MCC changed the laws around the helmet to make it legal to catch after the ball touches the helmet. Now, catching the ball after it touches the fielder's helmet is completely legal. Also, ICC has made it mandatory to wear a helmet which is compliant with the highest safety standard. However, ICC still has not made it compulsory to wear the helmet in international matches. It states that a batsman can choose to play without a helmet. But if he chooses to wear the helmet, then the helmet has to be standard compliance. So what do you guys think about it? The helmet has to be made compulsory? Do let me know in the comment section.